Today I've got a problem involving a nicely nested sequence that I found on the Math Stack Exchange. So let's look at what the problem says. So let's define a sequence by the following rule. a sub n is equal to the square root of n plus the square root of n plus the square root of n plus the square root of n, so on and so forth, which is infinitely nested. And then our goal is to find the natural number n so that a sub n is the 50 first natural number in the sequence. So let's maybe start with a little bit of exploration. So let's look at a sub one. So that's gonna be the square root of one plus the square root of one plus the square root of one and so on and so forth. So this in its own right is a pretty popular problem on the internet. So how could we look at this? Well, since we've got this similarity within nesting, we can use that. And in fact, if we notice, everything after this point is exactly a sub 1 again, which gives us this nice equation involving a sub 1. So we ha have a sub 1 is equal to the square root of 1 plus a sub 1. And now perhaps we could solve this equation. So we'd probably like to square it, leaving us with a1 squared is equal to a1 plus 1. Then maybe we'd move some things around, leaving us with a1 squared minus a1 equals 1. And we could either use the quadratic formula to finish this off after moving the 1 over, of course, or we could complete the square, and that's what I'm going to do. So I could add one quarter right here, if I also add one quarter right here, and that allows me to factor the left-hand side. So now the left-hand side will factor like a1 minus one half, and we have this is squared equals five quarters. But you know, with a couple more steps, we'll see that a1 is equal to one half plus the square root of five over two. In other words, one half and then one plus the square root of five. I believe that's the golden ratio, which is pretty interesting in its own right. So that's not a natural number, but really we can see immediately why that isn't a natural number. And that's because five right here is not a perfect square. So we'll use a similar strategy moving forward, but we'll wanna get a perfect square inside of that last square root. Just for some more exploration, let's look at the n equals two case. So we have a sub two is equal to the square root of two plus the square root of two plus the square root of two. That's infinitely nested. We can do the same trick as before and write a sub two as the square root of two plus a sub two. And then we can square both sides, leaving us with a two squared is equal to a two plus two. And then move some things around. We'll have a2 squared and then minus a2 equals 2. And then we'll do the same completing the square. In fact, it's exactly the same completing the square. We'll add 1 quarter to both sides. So let's see where that leaves us. We'll have a2 minus 1 half squared is equal to, well, let's see, that's going to be 8 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is 9 over 4. Now, taking the square root of both sides and keeping the positive square root, given that this is definitely a positive number, as this is also a positive number, will leave us with a2 minus 1 half is equal to 3 over 2, which means in the end, a2 is equal to the number 2. So that is a natural number. But let's step back for just a minute and see how we could figure this out. This is the same thing as saying that a2 is equal to 1 half plus the square root of 9 over 2. Okay. But then let's notice that this number right here is the second odd perfect square. So let's maybe note that. So this is the second odd perfect square. And it turns out that the second odd perfect square was the first natural number within this sequence. And it stands to reason that this pattern will continue. Okay, so let's point that out here. So that is kind of in correspondence to the first natural 
natural number in the sequence. So just to reiterate, the second odd perfect square is corresponding to the first odd natural number in the sequence. And it's the second odd perfect square which lands in this square root. So I think maybe there's a pretty clear generalization here, and that would be if we want the nth natural number in this sequence, then we need the m plus first odd perfect square. And we won't really prove that because during our general solution, that'll like kind of come out for free. So let's maybe summarize this and then move on. Okay, so somehow it seems like there's a correspondence between the m plus first odd perfect square and the nth natural number in this sequence. And now let's play that game of using our recursion to find a closed form for the terms of our sequence, but in general. So let's rewrite a n as the square root of n plus, but then we'll do the same observation over here. In this case, we're chunking all of this stuff and noticing that that n itself is a sub n. So we'll put an a sub n right here. And from here, let's square both sides. So if we square both sides, we get a n squared equals a n plus n. And now we're going to continue on very, very similarly. So we'll have a n squared minus a n equals n. Now let's complete the square. So that means we need to add one quarter right here and add one quarter right here. Let's combine these to get a 4 n plus 1 over 4. And now I think we can see how the odd perfect square is arriving. It's because we've got this 4n plus 1 type term. And I won't go into how to prove this, but it turns out that all odd perfect squares are of the form 4n plus 1. So let's point that out here. So all odd are of this form. So that means we won't miss any. You know, a priori, we might have some of the form 4n plus 3, but in fact, we don't. And actually, maybe I will sketch out a little way to do this. So let's take an arbitrary odd number, that'll be 2n plus 1, and we'll square it. And let's notice that that will turn into 4 times the quantity n squared plus n plus 1, but that's most definitely of the form 4 times something plus 1. So that's essentially all it takes to show that all odd squares are of the form 4n plus 1. Okay, so anyway, now let's factor the left-hand side. So that'll leave us with a n minus half all squared equals 4n plus 1 over 4. But now we can take the square root, and that'll leave us with a n equals 1 half times 1 plus the square root of 4n plus 1, after moving some things around, of course. Okay, so now since all odd squares are of this form, and the m plus first odd square will give us the nth natural number in this sequence, what we want to do is find n so that this is the 52nd odd perfect square. And that 52nd odd perfect square will make this a natural number. Okay, so what is the 52nd odd perfect square? Well, I think in general, we have 2m minus 1 is the mth odd number. Okay, but that means if we square it, that'll be the mth odd perfect square. So that means we can just plug in m equals 52 into here. So we have 2 times 52 minus 1 all squared will be our mth odd perfect square. So multiplying this out, we'll get 2 times 52, which is 104, minus 1 is 103. So we have 103 squared. But we need that to be equal to 4n plus 1. Okay, so now we've got a nice equation that we can solve for n. So let's finish this off by doing that. 
Okay, so here's a summary of what we had. A closed form for our a sub n, and this statement that the 51st natural number will occur when 4n plus 1 is equal to 103. But let's note that that means that 4n is equal to 103 squared minus 1. I should have said 103 squared before. But now we can factor this as Let's see, 103 minus one times 103 plus one. So that's just a nice way of looking at this as a difference of squares. So that gives us 102 times 104. Now we can divide both sides by four. So that'll give us n equals, well, I'll divide this one by two and this one by two. So it'll be 51 from this first one divided by two times 52 for this second one divided by two. And that is the natural number n that solves this problem. You might say, well, what is the value of a n in this case? So let's calculate the value of a n in this case. We'll have a n is equal to 1 plus, well, I don't need to do this calculation because I already know this is 103 squared. I take the square root, I get 103 over 4. So that's going to be 104 over 4, but I believe that's equal to 26. So there we have it. The 51st natural number in this sequence is equal to 26, and it's when n is equal to 51 times 52. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.